Beijing promised to host the Winter Olympics for the low price of $3.9 billion. That would make it the cheapest games in two decades. But behind headlines of sustainability and savings is a catalog of spending that could actually land Beijing among the most expensive games in history. You might hear with regard to Beijing 2022 that the budget is $3.9 billion. Um, what does that mean? Almost nothing. We may never know some of the costs, but others are hiding in plain sight, like the artificial snow covering these mountains. We combed through news reports, press releases, and official documents and found more than $38 billion in spending related to the 2022 Olympic Games. We also found human and environmental costs that don't show up on any price tag at all. This is just one of three brand new Olympic villages that were built in the last few years to house thousands of athletes during the Games. It cost about $3.2 billion to build. Including the cost of just this village would nearly double the official budget. Of course, experts have long debated how to calculate the true cost of a mega event like the Olympics. The International Olympic Committee told Insider that the official budget doesn't include infrastructure like new trains or highways. But when China hosted the Summer Games in 2008, the country's own tally was $42 billion and included infrastructure like an airport terminal in Beijing. Later estimates put the total at over $50 billion. But Russia outdid China's spending on the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. Beijing's official tally of $3.9 billion looks especially low when you consider that no games since London have cost less than $13 billion. But that's because the official budget includes very little beyond the cost of running the 19-day event. So what's missing? Any so-called official numbers or budgetary figures that come out of any of these games is, is highly suspect. Andrew Zimbalist's books change the conversation on Olympic costs and influence potential host cities. That number of 3.9 billion, it's a very restricted number that doesn't give you any real sense of, of what the total costs were or, or will be. There are 25 venues for the 2022 Winter Olympics. The main athletes village is in Beijing, and that's where ice hockey, speed skating, big air events, and curling will take place. Unveiled in January, the new National Speed Skating Oval is estimated to have cost $186.6 million. But we can't find this in the accounting for the games. There were some price tags that we couldn't find at all, like the cost of a venue called Big Air Shogong that was built on an old steel mill site. The Beijing suburb of Yanqing is home to a second Olympic village and brand new venues for bobsled, skeleton, luge, and alpine skiing. Another number that doesn't appear to be in the budget? These Yanting venues that total $442.9 million, according to one 2018 estimate. We also don't know how much most of the new venues cost in Zhangjiakou, like this National Ski Jumping Center, and the cost of a third new Olympic village in Zhangjiakou, as well as four new venues for sports like biathlon, cross-country skiing, freestyle skiing, and snowboarding the total costs could be much, much higher. In 2018, state media said refurbishing existing venues would be cheap, but they didn't say how cheap. China has publicly said that the Olympic villages will be sold or used as hotels and apartments after the Olympics, and that this kind of permanent infrastructure will be counted as part of a long-term investment in winter sports, including in some places where it rarely snows we found major infrastructure costs related to the 2022 Olympics, like a brand new bullet train that links all three host cities. It's fully automated and tops out at over 200 miles per hour. And it cuts the travel time between Beijing and Zhangjiakou from three hours to just under an hour. What's the total cost? $9.2 billion. It's one train that costs more than double the entire official Olympic budget. Oh. And one car has a live broadcast studio for state media, something that may or may not be useful outside of a few weeks in February. 
State media Xinhua reported that the train was custom-made for the Beijing Games. Beijing also spent $205.6 million to spruce up one of the region's airports, and $773.5 million on a new subway line. China's also finishing up a $15 billion highway project to connect venues in Yanqing and Zhangjiakou. So these costs can be enormous, like an airport is hugely expensive, a new rail line and so on. Ben has authored numerous studies on Olympic costs that don't include major infrastructure because those expenditures are decided by the host city. Often these costs, I mean, they would be done anyway. President Xi Jinping visited Olympic venues before the Games. But a green Olympics may not be so simple. The main skiing venues are in a parched part of China that gets just 25 inches of average annual snowfall, not nearly enough to cover the slopes. By comparison, Park City, Utah gets 235 inches. That's where Salt Lake City's Olympic giant slalom was held. Snowmaking for the Olympics would require 500 million gallons of water, according to one estimate. They're going to be diverting water away from the agricultural uses in order to make the artificial snow. Those uh, environmental costs are not going to be included. When asked for comment, the IOC defended the snowmaking plan. Some costs have been even harder to tally. AFP reported that farmers were forced from their land to make way for solar energy. This man says he saw farmers get beaten and detained when they refused to sign contracts with one of China's largest utilities to build solar panels. In a statement, the IOC told Insider that more than 1,500 residents have been resettled or compensated for being displaced for the Olympics. Beijing did not respond to requests for comment on this topic. For all of the money spent on the Games, Beijing won't even be able to recoup its costs through ticket sales because spectators aren't allowed. Organizers also told us that the official budget will be released six months after the Games have ended. We know that uh, China has a dodgy record with data. So, you know, basically, if the party says there's no cost overrun, there's no cost overrun. Without those answers, it's likely we'll never get a full understanding of what the Winter Games cost in 2022.